From our studios here in central Moscow, this is RT. Just past 11 p.m. here in the Russian capital and 9 p.m. in Libya, where five Russian journalists captured by Libyan rebel fighters earlier on Friday have been freed. It comes as the front line continues to shift in the fight between Colonel Gaddafi's forces and the rebels. Our correspondent, Paula Slayer, joins us now with the latest developments from the capital, Tripoli. Now, Paula, this is the first time that we know of that journalists have been held by rebel forces during the conflict. Is there any indication as to why they decided to do this? Well, it certainly seems as more and more details become available that there was some confusion on the ground. As you say, five Russian journalists, two of them print journalists with a leading Russian newspaper and three working for a Russian television network. They have been released. They are back in their hotel in the rebel town of Benghazi, safe and sound. Now, they say that they were reporting at the entrance to the town of Ajdabia, which is some 70 kilometers west of Benghazi. When they were picked up by opposition fighters, they were put in two jeeps and brought back to Benghazi, where they they were interrogated for several hours at the former military base there. They say that the one question that they were constantly asked is why were they heading to the southern side? Now, this does seem to suggest that the rebel fighters thought that they could perhaps be moving with Gaddafi's forces and that they wanted to ascertain that this was not the case before actually letting them go. But the journalists saying that they were treated fairly and that they had no complaints as far as their treatment went. They also say that they had an opportunity to actually see the rebels themselves retreating from the eastern part of the country and also an opportunity to see some of the heavy machinery that they now have access to. Now, for several hours, I've been in contact here in Tripoli with the Russian embassy. They've been in contact with the Russian foreign ministry. And certainly earlier in the day, we heard from the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, that they were monitoring the situation carefully. They had contact with both the Italian and the Turkish consulates in Benghazi. And that if the journalists were not free today, there was also the option of Russia approaching those countries who reportedly have special units operating on the ground. The situation did raise eyebrows around the country because, as you say, this was the first time that journalists have actually been taken by opposition forces. The situation is very different here in Tripoli, where we still are hearing that at least four foreign journalists are being held by the Libyan authorities and no news yet as to their fate. Well, on Thursday, Paula, we saw coalition forces mistakenly launch an airstrike on rebel tank positions. Tell us, what has the, the local reaction been to that? Well, there has been a sense of disillusionment amongst the opposition forces here in Libya for quite some few days now towards NATO. They've been complaining that they haven't actually carried through with their airstrikes. They said that they've only destroyed maybe 25, 30 percent of Gaddafi's machinery, and they're calling for an increased volume in NATO airstrikes, while in fact the opposite is happening. We've witnessed a decline in the number of airstrikes taking place. But now with this latest airstrike that has gone horribly wrong, the second NATO airstrike in two weeks to to mistake rebel fighters for Gaddafi forces, this latest airstrike killing some five rebel fighters and wounding some 22, this has changed the mood from disillusionment to anger. And we're hearing more and more anger being expressed from the opposition forces here towards those coalition forces. Uh, the, the NATO Secretary General has said that he strongly regrets this incident. There hasn't actually been an apology per se from NATO, but they have explained the situation by saying that the front line is extremely fluid, there's the constant flow of weapons forwards and backwards, and that they had not been informed that in the last few days the rebel fighters had started using weapons and machinery and tanks that had formerly belonged to Gaddafi's forces and that at the same time also looked very similar to them. Paula, thanks very much indeed for that live update there in Tripoli.